I believe that right now, at this very moment, as you look at the picture of the donkey, that God is going to speak to some of you and it's going to call you into activation. Because I'm not the only one getting in touch with my destiny. I could tell you that. I'm talking to folks throughout the week. And there's people are getting ready to do something. And this ministry is an equipping platform for end times believers that are like the sons of Issachar. That's over in uh, 1 Chronicles 12. I think it's 12.32. And it says that these children of Issachar, they were men and I'm, women, of course, as well, had understanding of the times and they knew what Israel ought to do. That's what it says about them. And that's the truther, that God has opened your eyes for a reason. And the Lord has need of you uh, in this hour, just like he told his disciples, go get me a donkey, loose him and bring him to me. So according to seven different prophets that have come to David Hogan separately over the last year or two, and they didn't know each other, and they all had pretty much the exact same message for him, seven of them. He doesn't like prophets, but he said this was extraordinary because they all said the same thing. He said, they said there's a tidal wave of energy about to hit the earth. A glory power wave is about to hit the earth and miracles are going to be released. That's what they said. Healings. And a great ingathering of souls. And God just invited us to be part of it. And I'm inviting you. Do you want to be part of that? Yes or no? You only get one chance to give God glory. You only get one life. And one of my talks uh, recently, I pointed out that there were these kings in the Old Testament and they did what was right in the sight of the Lord. But only the ones that tore down the high places did God send revival. And those of us that are carrying this message that the Bible's been supernaturally changed, we're tearing down a high place of biblical idolatry. So the ability to regularly get people healed and delivered is very challenging. It requires incredible discipline, focus, faithfulness, consistency, for sure a walk of holiness. And this is why I believe that the majority of God's people have gravitated towards a more scholastic, miracle-free type of Christianity. And it's why God has sent this judgment of the Bible changes. He's driving us back to true Christianity. A Christianity that is filled with supernatural. God speaking to you. Angels, miraculous healings, deliverance, provision. I don't know about you, but that's what I want. And if that's you, if you want your life to count, you want to allow God to spend you like money, I've got a specific assignment for anyone that's willing to answer this call. So I recently updated the Bible quiz. It's on my website. Okay, so if you go to the website, it's on wakeuporelse.com here. On the resources tab, click on that and you'll see at the very top, there's two Bible quizzes. One is for King James only and one is universal. And the King James version has more questions and they're a lot easier to stump people because it's not convoluted by all the different translations. And of course, the King James language is very unique. And it did seem to be singled out by the devil for changes because there's a lot more changes in that one. However, you always want to ask the person that you're going to give the quiz to what Bible translation do you usually use? And if it isn't King James only, use the universal one. There's plenty of questions there as well. So the assignment, if you choose to accept it, is to capture on video a person taking the fill in the blanks quiz and recording their answers on video, and then send that to me. And I've done this once with a pastor, but it was very challenging. You know, it's not easy to get somebody on camera taking a Bible quiz. Um, 
It requires some boldness and some ingenuity. Or right, here's some ideas since I've tried to do this a bunch of times. I think that the probably the best approach is to be very straightforward and basically challenge people. Like, are you willing to give an account for the faith that's within you? Because I believe the Bible's supernaturally changing, and I think that if I ask you, ask you these questions, you're going to get most of them wrong, which is going to prove that there's something happening. That's pretty much the, full, the frontward approach. Now, you can also just not say anything and say, hey, I got a Bible quiz. Will you take it? And just launch into it. Because people like doing Bible quizzes. So however you decide to roll... We need to get it on camera because what I'm about to work on this week is a video that I've been wanting to make for a long time. It's called, it's going to be called uh, Your Objection is Overruled. And this is going to end up being what I believe is going to be our go-to response for any unconvinced person trying to tell us that we're misremembering. Or it's going to be the go-to response to just to send to people. And basically, we're going to be like, we're not misremembering, and I can prove it. Here, there's a video. It comes with an answer sheet. I want you to go and watch this and see if you can answer even one of those questions. Because if you can't answer the questions, then your objection to my testimony is overruled, my evidence is entered into the court of public opinion, and that then becomes evidence. Your testimony is the evidence. All right, so part of this list of questions that I'm going to ask, ask is one of them, which is 10 doctors, 10 pilots, 10 pastors. And in that, I need to have a couple of examples of people or pastors, either one, where they're being asked the questions, boom, 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 one after the other, real quick. Don't let them get into the commentary of why their answer is what they're, all you want to do, this is only to test your memory. So, okay, in your memory, who laid down with the lamb? This is Isaiah eleven six, 6. Uh, the lion. Okay, next, boom. You go one after another. And you record that and you send that to me and we'll put it into this documentary. And... Uh, it's going to be it's going to be the thing we'll use all the time and then the other thing i'm going to be um i've started working on is a book on the supernatural bible changes which is going to be a complete comprehensive treatment of how this could be happening all of the theological things that god has shown us it's going to be a foundational document because in order to really go out to the church, I have to put all of the things that God has shown us into a book. People are not going to go combing through my three-hour talks to get the response to their questions, and all the questions are the same. We need a book where we can just point to and say, here, go to chapter two. We already addressed that. Here, go to chapter three. Boom, boom, boom. So the book is the, the thing I'm working on now. And then also um, Friday night, we're going to start meeting Friday nights, and it's just going to be called Pursuit of Miracles. And what I'm going to do is just basically continue to show what the fake looks like and what the real looks like. And we're going to get detoxified from the unbelief and the, the fouled up thinking that we've had regarding miracles and faith healers because the fakes have really put us off to it and we're going to get on fire for God and we're going to figure out how to do this. And let me just give an example. Here's a, a response I got from my talk last night. Um, this subscriber says, I have a serious question. Does it say anywhere in the Bible why, why some people get miracles and others will not? And so what I did was I just googled uh, scriptures that explain unanswered prayer and I got a hundred of them a <laughs> hundred different scriptures that tell you why prayers don't get answered and talking to 
and listening to the people that do consistently get prayers answered, they'll tell you nobody knows why some prayers get answered and others don't. We only know that there's things that we can do that seem to help us get prayers answered more frequently. Even Jesus prayed for a blind guy and Jesus says, okay, so how's it going? And the guy says, I see men, but they look like trees. And Jesus had to pray a second time. <laughs> so it's just a matter of starting to do it and letting God train you on the job training. And he'll start to touch things and tell you things and show you things and you just get better and better and better at it. And essentially, it's really about your walk with him. It's about your ability to discipline your life so that this becomes the primary reason that you exist. It is to be poured out wine and broken bread for others. So let's do this. Send me an email at pleasewakeuporelse at, at gmail.com. Tell me what's on your mind. Uh, ask me questions. Get the, get the quiz, get your camera, go out and get some people on camera and send it to me. Let's do this. All right. See you Friday on Rumble. God bless.